Hi, I'm back again with Debbie Reynolds, the Data Diva. Thanks for being on the show again. Thank you, Lee. So we're finishing up our multi-part series relating to cell phone forensics as it relates to the FBI's desire to get Apple and other information from the cell phone makers so that they can unlock the phones. Right. So there was a recent uh, shooting, unfortunately, in Pensacola at the Naval Air Station. And uh, because there were people who were recording the attack, uh, they're interested in being able to get information from those cell phones. And uh, this is renewed calls, um, as was the case with the San Bernardino attack in California in 2015 to have Apple help uh, law enforcement unlock uh, particular cell phones of folks. Yeah, as, as Debbie was saying, with the Pensacola Naval Air Station, what had been reported in the Associated Press was that uh, a Saudi national uh, student who was getting training out of the Navy facility, which our, our government trains foreign nationals and other militaries, and has been doing that for a long time, mm -hmm. but uh, some of the Saudi students had been watching, um, earlier that evening they had been watching videos of mass shootings before the shooting took place. And during the shooting, as she said, one of the students had been recording the events as they unfolded and likely has data on cell phones and other information. Right. I think the issue is, uh, you know, is law enforcement able to get this information without accessing the cell phone? And the, the chances are possibly yes. So yeah. there are many different ways to get Yeah, it. but th this week they, they asked Apple for help to get in and they said they haven't been able to get in the phone. But like what happened with San Bernardino, it's not entirely clear if they had fully used their capabilities like their mobile access unit. Had that unit exhausted their capabilities? Had they reached out to third-party vendors and computer forensic consultants and firms like myself or they do others? This every day, yes. Or even uh, the Israeli firm that uh, called Celebrate, right. which makes uh, the equipment used by many forensic people like myself, uh, that was ultimately successful in unlocking the San Bernardino uh, terrorist phone. Well, the one thing I will say is, uh, 2015. Uh, the phones have gotten a bit more advanced. Uh, the encryption is better. Uh, but if, for example, if people are taping things on cell phones, typically they're sharing it with other people. So you may be able to get the information from another person's phone. If the phone is backed up, you may be able to get the data from a backup. Um, you may be able to get phone records about who yeah. they were calling or who they were texting, even though yeah. you may not get the actual footage. Uh, there are a lot of different ways of triangulating yeah. this information. And if they plug their cell phone into their computer, a lot of times that will automatically create a backup file. But in this case, I, I think the, you know, the FBI has a legitimate interest in wanting to know who were they texting right beforehand, were other people involved. So I support that, but I think that there's different means of how to accomplish their goal. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think it, the way that the story is told in the media, it, it makes it seem as though the only way the information can be gotten to is to have uh, Apple or other cell phone makers create a vulnerability that anyone can use on any phone. And I don't think that that's exactly true no. uh, because we've not seen that in the field and many of us work with cell phones every day. Well, there was recently disclosed a vulnerability in every iPhone up to, not including the very latest model, but every iPhone relating to the boot ROM where the phone can be, you know, basically bootlegged and taken over um, until it's rebooted, then it resets. So I'm sure that there's already bypass means on 95% of the iPhones out there since most people aren't running the, the latest model. But again, the concern here is that it almost seems like there's an effort to try to change the policy. It, you know, Director Comey, uh, from the FBI, former Director Comey had repeatedly stated that we need to be able to defeat encryption, but by its nature, it's like saying everyone should have weak locks on all their doors and companies shouldn't lock their stuff up. So that's going to lead to problems. And, you know, as I said in the prior segment, a multi key solution that has unlocked but specific to an individual user's cell phone with approval by the court, I think that is a much better solution than having a master key that can open up any phone. I think so. And I mean, we've seen in other cases, um, 
you know, it's not about terrorism, obviously, but the Jesse uh, Smollett issue in Chicago, uh, they were able to, to get a ton of information. So they, they went to Uber, they had surveillance cameras, um, they had yeah. phones. I mean, well, the, they get the, GPS records oh, on phones. All types you can get of stuff. cell phone tower records. And then you have all these third party apps like, you know, the secure uh, signal and WhatsApp. Well, is it very secure if you get one of the two phones? Not right. exactly, because you can see all the messages. Oh, absolutely. And I think Paul Manafort, unfortunately, found this out the hard way when he was using WhatsApp to chat with people about illegal dealings. And uh, the forensic folks were able to, to get the exact chat and all the text because he had backed it up to his his iPhone or his i, iCloud, I, I believe. So uh, It's interesting. Now, e-discovery these days, when it... When things get involved with what was intent on a business deal gone wrong, or was there fraud or misrepresentation, you know, get, finding out what the text messages are and who was texting with which party and what did they say, that could be very important. And litigation still, it seems that text messages are just starting to to come up on, on the attorney's radar for asking for that information. Well, it's coming up on their radar because people use many different means. So. Someone may start with an email and then go to maybe Snapchat or go to text. So or Slack or Slack. Or You've so got there, there are these other platforms yeah. that are just, that right. should be part of e-discovery exactly. that are getting ignored unless exactly. you have an attorney or advisors like us yep. helping to make sure that you get that information. Exactly, exactly. It's not easy because it's not as linear as you think it will be. Uh, but if you know that you have this information. Uh, that is out there, it's possible to find ways to get it. Obviously, the cell phone would probably be the easiest way to at least be able to help you point to where things are, but there are different ways to be able to get the information. Not necessarily, so you do need the cell phone for the actual text, the text message, um, but but sometimes people have that hooked up to their computer yeah, too. So true. their computer right. might have you know, people who have a Apple laptop Methods, and running right. that. You might be able to get the messages off the laptop, which exactly. is yet another means of getting the the data. Exactly. And then you know there are entities that do log the messages in between. So That's you true. have the servers that they they cascade through. Exactly. So there's a lot of places that the information can be found. And you know before a mass policy change is made to just give an open key, you know, people need to think this through because yeah. when we've had key master keys open in the past, those keys have gotten leaked and it's created a lot of problems. Oh, absolutely. I think that's the that is the 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 villain in almost any little movie you can think of. Someone who mm -hmm. has a master bit of information that can rule the world. So this is definitely something that needs to be thought through and we already know that there are you know other things that can be done that don't require currently a master key yeah well one of the ways that uh all of you can show your appreciation if you like our videos is click like share the videos out and sign up for our blogs and, and check them out uh, thanks a bunch for being on the show again thank you lee this is fantastic Great. have a good day everyone